Hi. Uh, well, I'm Cece. Welcome back to my channel. Um, today, I just, I kind of want to get into it. Um, I want to go and kind of give you the whole spiel on uh, how I realized I was trans and how I got uh, to where I am today. Kind of a rough over, you know, kind of overview of everything. Um, I mean, like, you know, you'll hear a lot of trans women say, or a lot of trans people say that they were, they always, they were always a little different. Um, but, you know, honestly, for me, I just thought I was bi, you know, when I was younger, I just always, I, um, I knew I liked boys and I knew I liked girls. So I just figured I liked both. Um, it didn't really seem that complicated to me at the time. I was just going with it. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, I, you know, I grew up kind of, uh, in the South, so I didn't really have a lot of experimenting to happen and I didn't really have a lot of resources I could check out um, you know except for like popular media so I just kind of went with the flow and kept everything very hush hush and you know lived my life the best I could I actually realized I was trans after I spent several years in the army um, I had you know, I met a lot of uh, I met a lot of interesting people in the army, and I met a lot of a lot of different people, and I learned a lot and a lot of different cultural experiences from around the U.S. and honestly around the world. And I was laying in the back of a striker, uh, if you know what that is, it's like a a tank with wheels. So I was laying in the back of one of these things in the middle of like the desert in Fort Irwin, and I just hit me. I just realized, you know, what, what was going on. I had, I had recently seen some trans activists that had gotten, had gotten assaulted and, you know, I was, I was thinking about what they were fighting for and, and all of a sudden I realized that's what I was, that's what I am. And ever since then I've just been really pushing to be as honest to myself as possible. Because, um, you know, I spent so long, I spent so long not knowing. Once I discovered it, and once I found out, and once I realized why I was such a weirdo, I was, you know, it really, it was really refreshing. Super sorry about that. Um, yeah, but no, once, yeah, because for the longest time I just thought, you know, I was just a dork, or a weirdo, or unconfident. But, you know, I, you know once I discovered exactly why, and once I discovered who I was, um, it was it was on you know I wanted to be as authentic and honest and true to myself as I could be and that has led me down a really beneficial path you know I'm uh, I'm a trans model and part of what this channel is going to be about is kind of explaining how I got here and how uh, you can get here too um, yeah so uh, once I once I realized that I was trans I, I I didn't come out immediately, but I, I did come out within about a year after I got out of the army. I, um, I, got, I came out to everybody all at once, and that's not something apparently a lot of people do. I guess people usually do it in baby steps, but I just came out to everybody in about six hours. I just knocked out all my friends and family, you know, one clean swoop. Um, I was such, I was uh, a little bit of a, 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 a a dickhead beforehand though so a lot of people actually didn't believe me they thought I was fucking around uh, they, I thought I was messing around but um, no, yeah I was very, very honest and uh, it's been nothing but good since then part of my journey to be more honest and be more um, to get closer to who I know I am uh, I've had I haven't had many surgeries but I have had um, electrolysis a lot which is like hair removal, really permanent. And I've had an orchiectomy, for those of you who know, and that was, that was probably the best thing I've done in my life so far, was that surgery. Um, it, really, it really opened me up and it really let me feel who I am. And what it, what it really allowed me to do was express that to other people. I'm much more confident with my gender and with my sexuality and with my personality now, post Orky. So um, if anyone's out there considering it for whatever reason, I'm always going to be an advocate. So have fun and get a good surgeon. Um, some things that 
I know I'm, I'm really hoping for in the future is I am going to get my top surgery. Um, I plan on getting uh, breast augmentation probably within the next uh, year to 18 months, 12 to 18 months. Um, and, you know, I'm getting a little bit of pushback on that too because, you know, like I've, I've done nothing but go full out since I came out. So I'm planning on getting like 800 cc's and not everyone's excited about that, but I'm stoked. Um, you know, and there's, there's a, a myriad of other, you know, like uh, uh, procedures and treatment and um, just really interesting ways to express yourself. Um, not only am I a, a trans woman, but I'm also a trans humanist and I really think that, uh, you know, we're uh, we should be allowed to do whatever the hell we want to with ourselves. So um, I'd like to expand on that further in this channel too, I think. Um, yeah. I have, I have had the, the benefit of meeting a lot of good people since I've come out and really seen how others express themselves through transition and through their gender. So, okay. So yeah, um, speaking of uh, my, you know, kind of awakening in the army, um, I, I did meet, you know, for, um, I met, I met several gay guys in the army that were, you know, not, not super, not super open about it, but kind of identified each other. And, uh, um, that's, that's, that's really when I started to realize that, you know, this was okay. You know, this was not something I had to be ashamed of or embarrassed about. And that there were a lot of people like me. Um, I remember this one guy, uh, you know, it's funny the contradiction because you know, like you'll be thinking you think like you're in a bunch of like really hard people, really like tough, like Rambo folks, you know. But I was in the back of this truck and we were doing air guard, right? And so it's where you just stand outside of a truck while it's moving because it's super smart. And we were at the air hatch and we were supposed to be like scanning, you know, because we had we had M4s or whatever. So you're just supposed to be like looking, and he just reached over and kind of grabbed my hand that wasn't on my weapon, you know? <laughs> and uh, I'll never forget that, because it was just very obvious. And like, he never tried to be like ashamed about it or embarrassed about it or nothing, but it was one of those times where I just realized like, I am not, a, you know, I am not a freak. I am a normal person and there are other people just like me. And that was, that was one of the first times I really wanted to, or I really, I really started to kind of expand into myself. But he wasn't the only one. There were lots of weirdos in the army. Um, I met this one guy, we actually, uh, a, a good friend of mine, um, we actually got our dicks pierced at the same time. So that was a, that was an interesting day. Uh, I was there, I was there as emotional support originally for him. Um, but, and what was funny about that particular guy was that we kind of grew together. So once we found out we were both weirdos, we really started to like expand on that. Um, you know, like we did, we got our dicks pierced. That was pretty cool. <laughs> that was a good day. Um, you know, we ended up having a lot of like threesomes with other people in the army and other people's, you know, spouses and stuff in the military. Um, and, you know, really, uh, <laughs> really, really utilized the army experience. You know, we really, we really made that, um, <laughs> the, we really made the best out of that. For example, uh, we, uh, me and him and uh, a friend of ours and his wife actually were all we were having a, we were all weirdos and we knew what we were there for, but we were having a movie night and, <laughs> and uh, we were, it was what we called it, and um, we ended up uh, getting really wasted, which is pretty par of the course in the army, especially, you know, the infantry. You, you, you go and you drink, that's what you do. So we were all drinking and we were all having, uh, you know, we were all watching movies and we ended up just having a really big orgy. It was just a really big, we all just fucked each other and it was a good time. You know, and at this, at the time I was still presenting male and I didn't even realize I was trans yet, but I knew that I liked being open and I liked, you know, like, I liked sharing my body, and I liked, I liked sharing, you know, I, 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 that was, that, that first four years in the army was really, was really a time for me to, you know, just really open up, because 
you know, there's there's great people out there, and there, you know, there's people who like the things you like, and who liked the things that I liked at the time, and uh, it was great, you know, because not only was not only was he great, and not only was my our mutual friend great, but his wife was a blast, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we did a lot of fun. We did had a long night, we had a long night, and. Um, you know, stuff like that, you know, because I got, I got actually got branded while I was in the army um, to my spouse <laughs> and uh, my partner at the time, and he was, and one of one of my buddies was there for that too, and we. That's not something that everybody else does either, you know. Not everyone else gets someone's initials burned into their skin, no matter how much they like them. But I was, uh, I was really growing and I was really trying to understand and expand and I got there I think I think I got there eventually but um, yeah so that's just one of the one of the times that I had or a couple of the times I had I guess <laughs> um, after I came out and really was open and honest I found a lot more resources and I found a lot of people who really wanted to talk and talk you know and not just be dirty but really wanted to open up and expand and grow and I'm gonna pick better adjectives next time <laughs> but yeah um, just uh, a lot more resources and a lot of people who were already there and who were already experienced and who already were, were educated and were able to help me along the way like I'm kinda of hoping I can help some of y'all um, and kinda of educate you know how, how things can work not always how they do work but how they can work I mean, in uniform, I guess I'm not in uniform anymore, so it doesn't really matter. But, I mean, never on... I can't say that either. Yeah, I fucked around. Okay, so we did do a little bit, some dirty stuff in uniform. Um, but, I mean, never where we would get caught. We were always pretty pretty well pretty well uh, strategic about any, any dirty things we did. I was in the field once with a buddy of mine. And we had had a pretty easy day, and um, this was actually the same guy that reached out and grabbed my hand. And you know, like when you're in the field, it's often spaced out and quiet, and you know, like um, especially if it's like a training problem or something. So you know, I, <laughs> um, you know, he was he was somebody who had been really nice to me and who I really trusted and we that was my first not my first I shouldn't say that but um, I ended up blowing that guy out in the field in uniform and that was pretty hot that was probably one of the uh, one of the uh, I keep saying that but it was a good experience it was a good time um, other weird shit I did in the army I guess um, not a lot of barrack stuff not as much as you would think but I had another straight guy friend, just a, just a straight cis guy friend, and we did end up, he had a, he had a, he brought his girlfriend later to be his wife, um, from whatever part of the country that he was from, and we, we did tag team her together, that was a good time. Um, I don't really talk to either of them anymore, but that was something I'll always remember. That was in the barracks room, so, 11 Bravo for the win. Really cool chick, she was a, she was a really cool girl. Um, they were they were both from the south as well, so like we knew a lot of the same areas. Um, and I actually went. You know what's funny is I actually went to uh, basic with that guy, so that's why we were close. Is because I knew him from basic training, and we just happened to get stationed together. Um, and um, now his wife was his wife to become was crazy. She was uh, she was just really she was what I ended up, you know, striving to be later in life. She was just really open and really slutty. She was just a really, you know, she was just a really good time. And um, we, they have these little tiny mattresses in the barracks. I don't know about now, but we had like some whacked out Vietnam era 1970s looking asbestos in the walls barracks. And they were just no good, right? But we, then uh, they, all their mattresses, some of them were like two to a room, which was miserable, but all, they're all twin mattresses, and we still managed to get in there and fuck her brains out that night. That was a great time, and she, um, they were like plastic heart, uh, like hospital mattresses, so there was just like 
mess everywhere and it was um it was uh it was not a good thing for when the roommate came back i'll be honest with that that one that one was a little scary just because you're not supposed to do stuff like that especially in uniform especially in the barracks but um it was it was a good time it was a lot of fun um yeah so uh yeah um i hope they remember it as fondly as i do um experiences i've had outside of the army were pretty varied also um i've i've been with a lot of cis men just like you know no um like just cis guys um but I've been mostly with other trans women just because I think I don't know trans women are a little more fun. Um, you know, they uh, pre and post op. I've been with a little bit of both. I like my pre op girls though, just because they always try a little harder, and I like that. But um, you know, because it's hard to find a top, who, you know, a trans woman top. I, there's not a lot of them out there, but um, when you find one, you gotta hold on to them. Uh, <laughs> um, I think one of my, and I, I don't know, um, I think one of my experiences that I really enjoy thinking about uh, was the first trans woman I was ever with after I came out, um, I ended up blowing her in a parking lot at Pride, so that was a lot of good, that was a good time. Um, <laughs> uh, and that got, that got really messy, because we got busted and by one of her friends no less and then she was trying to like explain everything and uh, we just had to be like happy pride you know <laughs> like what are you gonna do and then i went we went to another like vacant lot and i finished her up because i am a lady so i am a, i'm a trooper and i you know i follow through um <laughs> and then we both got wasted and she had to leave but it was a it was a good day. It was a good night, and I, um, yeah, I have a I have a few experiences like that just kind of tossed throughout my life, and um, <laughs> I'm gonna enjoy kind of breaking them all down for y'all and talking about everything. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little example, this little sample, and next time you know we can do more detail or uh, we can uh, you know we can <laughs> we can expand on the people who I who I reference. Um, you know, because I would love, I would love to give y'all that, and just you know, within their privacy, of course. Um, but yeah, I hope y'all enjoyed everything, and I, I hope I, I hope I encourage some questions or at least some curiosity uh, about me and my life and my experience. And um, uh, please come back. Uh, we'll go into more details and leave any questions you have in the, the comments. And um, yeah, I'll see y'all next time. Bye.